Hello fellow engineers and welcome back to Hydroneer. And if you haven't been following my series on this, you need to know two things before we continue. Number one, for the duration of this game, we haven't been wearing any clothes except for our socks and hearty underwear. And number two, we have been turning our raw resource of dirt into gold and other things so we can make golden bars as well as polished gemstones, which we have been sending along this conveyor all the way over to here in order to turn the town of Bridge Poor into Bridge for because the devs thought this was a suitable bridge for the game but being an engineer we built this this and this fish bridge just to prove a point yeah i guess us engineers are a little bit petty anyway let's get in our truck and we will drive over to the shop because now that problem is finally fixed we can actually crack on with playing the game as you're meant to we're going to be mining gold but we're going to be heading up here because i want to make things a little bit easier on myself but first a massive thank you to today's sponsor atlas vpn now, if you're anything like my Labrador puppy Paddy, you probably want to enjoy the internet whilst knowing you and your IP address are safe from pesky architects trying to steal your data. And being the young pup Paddy is, you also probably want to enjoy a VPN that is suitable for gaming. So if you click the link in my description, you can get a three year Atlas VPN subscription for just $1.83 a month. And that comes with a 30 day money back guarantee if it's not for you. Now, Paddy loves high speed gaming and Atlas VPN offers the best VPN speed with over 750 optimized servers for reduced lag and ping. It also allows him to appear in a different location so he can access games that were previously unavailable due to geo restrictions. And with Atlas VPN, there's no risk of your ISP being an architect and throttling your connection whilst you game. Right now, there's a huge discount on Atlas VPN. Click the link in my description to get your three year subscription for just $1.83 a month. And you could be as happy as this little puppy as well. So, thanks to Atlas VPN for supporting the channel, and thanks to Paddy for being the best apprentice engineer I could ever ask for. But let's get back to today's video. I want to attempt to try and use some of these things, which I've never really dabbled in. These are all the logic parts, and they should enable us to do some automation. So let's grab a logic smelter, grab a few magnets, a load of wires, a load of buttons, a load of... What the hell are these? Shove them all in the back of the truck, and then we'll drive what you would assume would be the wrong way to our claim. But actually, if we can drive under here, not only do we get a good view of all of our bridges, but I think once we get to this waterfall, we can press the unstoppable stuck button yes and we have teleported back to our claim so over in our truck let's grab this this is the logic smelter and the idea here is we replace these normal smelters with that one and then we don't have to click on these in order to pour the bars out so let's get rid of all of these all right and then let's see how we want these to attach they've got wires in the side that's how you turn them on and off and basically when you turn them on that's when they smelt and they sort of ping out a bar so we're going to need a bit of adjustment here because if you look up here you can see i don't think the gold and stuff will actually reach in there i think we need to go a little bit higher and then we have that so now we just need to plumb these up with logic cables and stuff and we should see as resources go up there yep they plop in and then they're melting nice so now if i press this button yes yes okay so the bar comes out this way which is exactly what we wanted oh no but it needs to be pressed again oh no okay so it needs to be pressed again does it how do i get it to reset <laughs> right what if we try this this is a logic lever so if you look at the bottom a logic button outputs a value logic of one whereas a logic lever does a value of one or zero yes okay so one makes it go that way and then when you close it that does a zero so i think if we connect this up between the switch yeah this is what i want a logic flip-flop hook <laughs> hook that on top and then when we press that that goes down if i press again okay that's good that is good this is now a lever basically so i guess the question is how do i want these bars to work afterwards do i just want straight conveyor belts i guess i need to figure out do i want all of these to go at the same time or when the bars are the same size because in here i've got this now this is a logic counter so basically i can attach this to a conveyor belt is that going to go up to one it went up to one nice so i think we can probably do some logic to see when that hits a certain number to trigger this down here here. Oh, this is I quite like this. I quite like this. All right. So all I've done here, I've just literally connected the wire to everything. Right. So basically, every time that number goes up, a, a thing is coming out here, and it was it was triggering that. So 
I've just taken that off. You can see now, as a shard comes through, that sparks. So basically, this reading comes out the side. It then goes down and does that. We want it to go up. When it gets to a certain point, we want it to trigger the top. That should reset the number. So I think that's where we actually want to use these weird looking ones. So this compares if A is bigger or equal to B. So I guess we want our thing to come out of there. So we'll get rid of that for a second. Swap you with a corner. So then on B, I guess we that's where we need to input our number. So this might be where we use this, our logic keypad. So if we wang that there, we can make this number. We'll change it to 60 and then we'll see if that works. Hopefully when it gets to 60, it will reset. Oh no, it's reset already. Why have you reset already? Compares if A is bigger or equal to B. Oh, I've just realized it outputs a 1 or a 0. So basically how this works, if this number is greater than whatever's on this number, then out the top of it comes a 1. And if it's not greater than, then a 0 comes out. So I've got to use something that will hold back everything apart from the ones like this one the logic validator hook only lets a logic value pass if it's one or greater so if i wang that on that bit then assuming this is set up right this should only reset on whatever we have back here let's change it to five there's four so hopefully when five comes through there it is there's number five so the next one that should reset yes it's reset and then it counts again Yes! Okay, so we've got it. We've got it. So basically, we've just got to set this up so that out the top, we have another splitter, and that goes down to this to trigger that as well. And then that means however many shards we put in the back here, that is what will trigger this, and that will reset the counter. Oh, nice. Okay, I think I understand. Hopefully, you guys understand. I'm not sure if I explained that very well. All right, so I've got this all sorted. So I've moved the validator thing there. That lets only a one pass through. So the one comes up here. It goes down. It should reset that, and then it comes down the front. And then we need to do some clever stuff, because we basically want to trigger this twice because every time we want this to go off we want it to happen twice first with a one then with a zero so that it opens and then closes now we got this thing from before this is the the flip-flop hook so that turns whatever goes into it from a one into a zero then a one then a zero so i think that's what we want like the last thing before it enters this smelter uh, we just need something up here to turn the one input into two inputs now perhaps that's as simple as literally just doing a t where we get two sparks or just the one yeah so now every shard we get we get sparks so now i want to know if i were to put those back into each other what comes out the bottom so with a loop there it looks like just one spark is coming out okay that's fine what if we put a delay on this one so i got this which is a one second delay so if that goes on there so one spark two sparks Yes! Okay, so if we shove that on, that should give this two different signals. So it's done that, and then it, it didn't it didn't close. All right, let's just shove some of these shards on to trigger it again. All right, let's see. Does this spark twice? One, two. So it sparks twice. Okay, I think what's happening then is that the number that's coming down first is the wrong one. It's like a one or a zero. It's got to be the opposite one first. But look, you can see here that's stuck open. When I pull that lever, it does nothing. But when I press it again, it does do something. So that's why I know that it's the wrong number getting down here. Okay, after countless hours. <laughs> this took so long. This took like longer than the bridges. But I finally come up with a very, very simple mechanism to make this work. <laughs> Oh, Matt, what have you done? All right, so basically, I swapped these countery things because I realized counting isn't the most useful thing to do. So I replaced them with these things, which are, they, they measure the weight. So basically, this one here, that's measuring the weight of whatever's in the smelter. You can see there's, there's a little shard in there, so it weighs four. And then wherever I set this keypad to, that's the weight that the smelter will eject the bar at. So when that hits 20, the bar will come out. So basically, that sends a signal all the way out the back to this great than or equals thing which is attached to the keypad that's how it knows when to let the signal go this direction so when it's over 20 it will go this direction and then it gets split off here one way it goes down straight to the smelter so that triggers it to be ejected if we go back to the t and we follow it in the other direction it comes down here to this diode which only allows signals to go in one direction because we've got like a reset mechanism we don't want that going back and messing with all this so after that there is this t and then one of these goes off this way and into the the top of that and that basically just turns that number 20 or whatever it was 
using this into a one or a zero. And then here we've got another weight reader and I've set these a few conveyor belts apart just to give it a bit of time because we want to make sure the bar's fallen out before this gets reset. And basically this detects when there's a bar in front of it. So I tried to be clever, I knew that if this weighed 20 it would be ejected. So this would have detected a 20. So if it's linked up to this, which will detect the 20 bar going underneath it, then that would trigger everything, but it didn't always work like that. So essentially on the back of this, where this cable comes off along here, I've got another one of those which turns whatever number it was into a zero and then resets this. So essentially, if this detects anything on this conveyor belt, it will send a signal back to this and it will reset the smelter. Does that make sense? Probably not. Look, I mean, look at it. It's a mess. <laughs> you could probably condense it into the number of wires, but I wanted to keep mine like two wires wide so that I could repeat repeat this for these ones but anyway let's come over here let's turn it on and we'll see if it works so that is shut and you can see the time is reset so that's on four because the shard has just gone in so that will go up and when it hits 20 again you will see the bar gets ejected goes along there gets detected by that that closes back up sorted okay finally this is working the only thing i'm a bit concerned about i've had it happen a couple of times where basically a couple of shards come up at once so actually i think it might happen here there's two there so, did you see what happened there? The bar came through, but a shard has fallen through underneath. That's because they came through at the same time, and only one was needed to make the smelter measure 20, so only one of them melted. So, what I think I need to do is head over to here. We've got our magnet in the back of our truck. Right, I think I fixed this. I basically added a magnet that happens straight after. I'm just not sure what will turn the magnet off. Right, seems like I've done something wrong. My magnet's constantly on. Uh, for some reason, we're getting a signal through there all the time. Now, we're only meant to get a signal if this weighs more than 20. Right, so I got it to work. The reason it wasn't working is because the magnet was like defaulting to on. I had to default it to off. And then when this works, that does that, and that drops to the next one. So that's actually working pretty well. It's not perfect though. So basically I've got a one second delay on the magnet. Otherwise it was dropping these into like the open smelter. But obviously that means our problem of if two shards come up really close to each other. Because there's a second delay, that second one's still going to drop beneath like that one did. So I think if I had this one with a one second timer and then another magnet that didn't have a timer, that would cover like the sort of two seconds that I need. The trouble is within this two block width, there's literally... Actually, there's like no way to get another magnet in there. Like perhaps I could put one there. No, I tell you what, I tell you what. Give this a proper fair test. Let's take the shards off there and let's put iron on because we know there's a lot more iron. So I think this will be a proper test in terms of overloading it a bit. So there we go. The thing is on. We've got, oh look, most of them are in that magnet. Ooh, I think I might have fixed this. I think I might have fixed this. We'll let it run a few more times, make a few more bars. But yeah, that magnet seems to be doing the business. I don't think that one's doing anything really. Oh no, one got through. Damn, one piece got through. What if there's, there is a piece over here, this one, this turns off water so I could turn off the conveyor belt. What if I were to shove it on there and then replace that with a T? All right, let's see. When a bar gets made, does this conveyor stop? No, it doesn't. Oh yeah, if you look at that valve, I think it, it's got to be connected to a straight. If we grab that, shove it on that pipe, shove that one down there and this one on top. All right, so it's good. Is it, well, it's, it's nearly good. <laughs> this stops the water, which stops the conveyor belt, which means no shards can get down there, which is great. But it also stops this conveyor belt, which means this bar can't be detected to turn this back on in time. Urgh. So what if instead of this water running underneath, what if instead this pipe was on its own network? This front conveyor should always be running, even if this one is turned off. Right, and then all we've got to do is get this logic thing to default to always be on. So I think if I just attach it when a bar's being made, so basically right on my screen, as soon as that moves now, I press that. Look at the mess I've made, by the way. Absolute carnage, this. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, anyway, this seems to be pretty successful. We're getting a lot, a lot of bars. I mean, we're not getting too many spare bits of resource down there. So I feel like this is probably good enough to expand on to the other forearms, despite its downfall. And then we're going to see how much gold can we get. So once again, I'll see you in a bit.
Right, so hopefully you just saw a montage of us building this on stream. Uh, the dev joined us on stream, and uh, I'm sorry, we're gonna we're gonna have to leave this here because it's so exciting. Look what they did. So if we head over to this original bridge, yes, the one that we rated a very very low 5.9, uh, we can head under here because the game has just been updated. And if we look for the strongest shaped rock as our guidance, we can head to this pole to the right of it. And if we look around the back of it. <gasps> It's graffiti in my name! It's the score! 5.9 out of 10! RCE! That's me! That's me! Yes! I got an easter egg! That's so cool! It's so cool! Uh, it does make me feel a little bit guilty for doing this on stream, live in front of the dev's very own eyes. Uh, yeah, but still, still, I mean, I mean, it's 5.9, like, come on. Uh, also, this bridge over here, um, my Twitch chat, they blimmin, they made me do this. I'm not proud. I'm really not proud. But to be fair, I was bribed. So <laughs> I'd like to say destroying bridges is too far for me. But I mean, every engineer has his price, right? But yes, thankfully, that was on a different save. So our bridge is still standing. I mean, it was still standing. Anyway, it took two nukes and it was fine. Anyway, anyway, back to over here, the automation. Because look down here, we've got bars for days. Well, except for Clausium, because that stuff is rare. But yes, all these bars sort of show that this works almost flawlessly. I think the only change I need to make is moving this magnet. Because we've we've got to the stage. We tried a few different things out on stream, trying to get this to work. We do still drop the odd bit of resource. But I think we could potentially fix it if we move this magnet from there. I think if it was there, it might work. So I guess first things first, I'll show you what the problem is. So if we close that up, yep, the dirt is on its way now. Also, by the way, uh, this new update, it changes the, the look of the dirt depending on what level it is. And I think now you can only get Cloutium if your drills are below ground. So if your drills are like up here, you won't actually get any Cloutium. So yeah, looking down, you can, you can pretty much see that very much two different types of ore. Now also on stream, we we fix the conveyor belt thing. So let's head over here. So we're going to look at the, the iron. Once that gets to 100, there you go. The bar goes out. The bar's going along the conveyor. Everything else stops. The magnets turn on. The conveyor belt stops. But if we watch for long enough, you'll notice sometimes these magnets, they don't work as quickly as you want them to. Like there, did you see that? That bit of iron ore, it slipped through the net. It didn't actually get melted. It went, it, it dropped through while the floor was open. And then we've sort of, we've just got to move everything about a bit to get that magnet to go there. I think the easiest way of doing this is just to move everything up. So if I take that out, move everything up one. Right, so I think this middle one is done so the the line that takes iron hopefully we fix that let's close that up and let's see if having a magnet there helps the situation hopefully it does right so the reading down there it's about to come up to 100 so we should see both the magnets come on and stop anything dropping in yes nice and then it drops them that closes they all dropped in okay that one works fine I'm just going to sit here and watch like four or five more and see if there's any times where ores don't make it into the smelter. Oh, this is working. This is actually working, right? I think we fixed it. I think we've actually fixed this machine. Oh, we've actually done it. So all I've got to do then is like move all these magnets up to that position on the retrospective lines. And then we've made a fully automatic bar making machine look at all the iron bars don't you love to see it right so here we have it a perfectly automated bar making machine i think it's been fully tweaked so that oh no no oh no is that a bit of iron that's a bit of iron Okay, so one bit of iron in all of those bars does make it through. Uh, but overall, I would say this is a massive win. It works almost flawlessly. And whilst it might look complicated, it's actually fairly simple. I think next time I need to automate this. This is my gem compressor. So if I do that, all the gems inside they get compressed. So I just have one of each. So perhaps I could hook that up with wires and maybe to a stop valve to stop the other gems getting in there while it's doing its thing. But uh, yeah, I guess next time we're going to see, can we automate actually making jewellery? I don't think it's possible. It might be. I have to look into it. Maybe there's a mod we can use instead. But for now, we'll look at this logical mess and we'll say peace, love. And 5.9 out of 10. Oh, my own Easter egg. Bye, guys.